Hello there everyone, I'm still at work, still bored, and uh, kind of wanted to make up for that other video, which was just a pointless bunch of ramblings really. Uh, anyway, I wrote this little thing here about why I'm a sceptic, and why being sceptical is important. For some reason the word sceptic has several negative connotations. Many people think of wizened old men sitting in their towers of hatred damning the world with closed-mindedness and cynical ne negativity. This is unfair. Skeptics are neither cynical nor closed-minded, though I can't deny that some of them are old men, though skepticism does permeate through all ages and genders. Now, as a skeptic myself, I vehemently deny that I am closed-minded. Skeptics are, in fact, the most open-minded people in the world. It is, in fact, the believers in the paranormal who are closed-minded. When an experiment is carried out to test the validity validity of paranormal claims, skeptics are perfectly willing to change their mind about a subject if that experiment proves the claims to be true. Just checking for customers. <laughs> uh, if the experiment disproves the claims, however, rarely do the believers change their minds. They come up with excuses such as it was the negative energy of the experiment as that altered the results, something was wrong with the experiment itself, or sometimes that they simply weren't in the mood. If, for example, someone were to prove to me conclusively that dowsing actually worked, I'd accept that and take it on as part of my understanding of the world. <coughs> when dowsing is actually tested, however, the results do not prove the claims. The dowsers come up with positive results to the same degree would ex we would expect of chance. Do the dowsers change their minds? Do they even consider the possibility that dowsing may not be true? Of course not. It's something wrong with the experiment or the experimenter. Never doubt the power of dowsing. So why is it important to be sceptical? The fact of the matter is that when it comes to the paranormal, in cases such as mediums, dowsing, psychic surgery and the like, the people who suffer are those already suffering. These people are often desperate. In the case of psychic surgery and faith healing, these people have some horrible life normally, sorry, have some horrible life threatening conditions which drives them to seek out any hope. The healers provide them this, and they feel comforted as they hand over large amounts of money for placebos, which can make them feel better in the short run but in the long run are only ensuring they spend their last days poorer and cutting them off from actual medical help that could save their lives. In the case of psychics, I often hear people say things like, well, where's the harm in that? Surely it's all just a bit of fun and provide, uh, besides, it provides people help and hope, don't it? Well, there is something wrong with that. <clears throat> to you, it may seem like a bit of harmless fun, but the people who seek out psychics and mediums are often grieving through a death in the family or a lost child. The psychics prey on these people, milking them of money, profiting off their grief, and, in the case of some psychics, soaking in the public adoration of undeserved celebrity. I could name these people, but I think you all know who I'm talking about. And if you don't, I'm specifically talking about John Edwards and Sylvia Brown. Of course there are some paranormal things which are just a bit of a laugh, and are part of cultural history now. I have no problem with something like Loch Ness selling souvenirs about the Loch Ness Monster. It's not really hurting anyone. Uh, but just because it is just a bit of fun doesn't make it real. <coughs> so remember, stay, stay sceptical. Don't be conned by bastards and look out for each other. If someone you know has suffered a recent tragedy, make sure you're there for them so they don't run into the greedy arms of some con man or woman. Laters. Hello there, back again. Um, just wanted to re uh, recommend some good skeptical websites uh, podcasts YouTube videos um, uh, the best skeptical podcast is the skeptics guide to the universe I'll put a link in the information uh, it's brilliant <laughs> um, for videos check out uh, anything from the amazing meetings uh, there is one account, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head while I'm not connected to the internet, which is just amazing meeting videos. Uh, I'll put a link in the information as well. And um, websites, uh, randy.org, which is the JREF, James Randy Educational Foundation website. Uh, it's Randy with an I, not a Y probably get something completely different if you put that in there um, 
Uh, Phil Plate, the bad astronomer. It's good for uh, all kinds of skepticism, but mainly astronomical things, moon hoaxes, things like that. But he's very funny. Um, <clears throat> Pen and Teller, anything. Uh, they do is normally quite good. Um, I'll put a link to the Pendulette fan site uh, where you can download episodes of the radio show that you used to do. Um, uh, Skeptic Magazine website. Uh, just generally search Google Skeptic, really. Uh, I've spelled it the English way. The American way was with a K instead of a C after the S. Obviously, um, oh, there's something else. Oh yeah, obviously, let's talk about Penn and Teller, their show Bullshit, which isn't actually on in England, but I bought the DVDs from America. Um, hmm. Yeah, just Google skeptic really. Um, yeah, laters.